Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome to day two of Chessable Masters 2020 Grand Final and already in game number one we had a masterpiece, a really beautiful game uh, and then we had also very exciting another three games which I'm gonna refer um, at the end of this video so if you are interested in, of the whole story then you know stay until the end because a lot of things happen so uh, first I would like to show you the game number one uh, as white we have Magnus Carlsen uh, and as black Anish Giri so without further ado let's see what happened on the board we have d4 by Magnus Carlsen knight on f6 c4 e6 knight on f3 d5 queens gambit declined knight on c3 and now c5 same Tarash defense uh, and now C takes on d5 and black has to decide how to take the pawn uh, because they can play with isolated um, queen's pawn uh, however the main line is knight takes on d5 and now e4 kicking the knight by Magnus Carlsen knight on c3 b takes on c3 and now all the line is forced C takes on d4 C takes on d4 bishop on d4 bishop on d2 exchanging the bishops and now castle by black uh, and what just happened white have the center and want to push uh, the center the pawn d uh, but black already have two pawns against one pawn on the queen side so they can create the past pawn the problem is it takes a lot of moves so it's not possible first they have to uh, play against the the central attack of white so we have bishop on c4 developing the bishop control controlling d5 so uh, it makes to make it easier to to actually play d5 and now we have knight on d7 we have castle b6 preparing b7 uh, and now rook a on d1 bishop on b7 rook f on e1 and now rook on c8 attacking the bishop bishop of course could retreat to f1 very safe square however you know world champion want to get the initiative and of course he played bishop on c4 for the reason to control d5 very important so bishop on b3 uh, bishop stays on the diagonal you know this is the bobby fisher diagonal uh, so definitely one of the favorite uh, plays for the bishop for magnus carlsen uh, we have rook on e8 and now uh, what is this position the rooks support the, the attack of the pawns so here is the idea uh, and black of course uh, also bring the bishop to control the, the light square here the knight can easily jump to f6 and the game can continue so and now the main move and it was played plenty of times is h3 uh, and after knight on f6 queen on f4 knight on h5 queen on h2 believe me or not queen on h2 and then h6 and this move is you know played by super grandmasters ding liren played that move uh, vladimir kramnik played that move so uh, all of these lines uh, are already played uh, and some of the games were won by black uh, a lot of draws and uh, and it's it's quite interesting uh, however Magnus Carlsen play rook on e3 quite a sideline uh, and now we have knight on f6 and now queen on e1 is the obvious uh, move in this position it's the I will explain you why uh, in a while because because you will see from the position so queen on e1 is the one of the moves possible and queen on d3 these are the moves however in this position Magnus play a very early d5 and this is a quite a novelty definitely the preparation because Magnus instantly played all that moves and here uh, Anish Giri started to think we have e takes on d5 e5 and now the knight jumps to e4 very good position for the knight uh, and here the first idea which came to mind of the of the all the grandmasters is of course rook on e4 the idea is this bishop would be alive so after d takes on e4 e6 here is the idea and now if e takes on f3 then of course e takes f7 with check getting back the material uh, and then after g3 the position is 
uh, slightly better for black because black has one extra pawn and this pawn can be very annoying is defended uh, and also the queen can try to come to h3 and checkmate on g2 so it's always very dangerous however white pieces are very active there are uh, back rank issues on the on the black side as well so uh, it's not so easy actually uh, for black to defend that pawn uh, and continue the game as as white has the, the active pieces However, king on h8 can be played immediately and that's actually is better for black. So this is why uh, we didn't see that on the board. E takes on f7, rook on f8 and after exchanging all the pieces, which of course is possible, knight e5. Uh, and yes, white have this pawn, however, it's nearly impossible to promote it. Black gonna just play g5, uh, king on g7 uh, and, and win that pawn uh, pretty soon. Uh, without the rook is is just impossible to continue. So... Uh, yeah, that, that, that's why it was not played, but Grandmasters uh, in the studio were quite excited about that. But after Queen on E1, now you understand why the main move in the uh, in this opening is Queen on E1. Now it's a serious threat, because Rook is pinning the, the pawn and uh, that would be of course disaster. So we have Queen on C7 by Anish Giri and now Knight on D4. Uh, pretending to go on b5 or maybe not even pretending but this is a real threat going to b5 with tempo on the queen uh, and then come on d6 and win the exchange so that is a serious threat this is why we have a6 but now magnus plays h4 and now what is the idea f3 is the very standard idea in this opening uh, and then queen can come to g3 the knight can come to f5 look at this outpost this is just beautiful square for the for the knight with the attack on g7 uh, and if black gonna weaken the the pawn structure they have to then of course this pawn uh, as well gonna join the attack so it looks like very very dangerous uh, we have rook c on d8 by anish giri and now f3 as planned and now uh, the knight where would you put the knight so the best place for the knight is e6 and it's not very difficult to to get there uh, anish giri could go uh, through g5 for now it's not possible however this is the alternative way and of course uh, the knight is heading to to e6 and the knight's gonna be beautiful blocker there so we have h5 knight on e6 uh, not only blocking the pawn, but also preventing any f4 support for the pawn. Uh, we have knight on f5 as planned. The knight was challenged to the exchange as well. Uh, and now we have d4 attacking the rook. Rook e on d3 and position of black is starts to be very, very unpleasant. Uh, and it wasn't so clear where to improve the position. For example, uh, now knight on f4 with the attack of, of on the rook doesn't really work because rook on d4, rook on d4, rook on d4, and it looks like this pawn can be taken. However, it, it doesn't work because rook on e5, queen e5, okay? Uh, and the queen cannot be taken because there is a checkmate. Okay, uh, eight rank issues uh, all the time in this in this uh, game. So so black have to be very very careful here. Uh, knight on f4 doesn't work. What the engine suggests actually is bishop on d5. But the problem is uh, black gonna give up the exchange. So knight on d6, bishop on b3, knight on e8, rook on e8, a b3. And let's say h6 and the game can continue it's not so bad for black actually uh the black could continue from here this pawn it's not so easy you know to win uh white of course can give back the exchange but what's the point if you know being the exchange up uh this knight defends the the pawn also controls f4 so uh also these two pawns on the queen side black has a lot of you know uh counterplay so this is possible however we have knight on c5 different move it's very logical the engine doesn't like it but it's very logical attacking the rook and also attacking this bishop uh we have rook on d4 rook on d4 rook on d4 knight on b3 
and now an uh, intermezzo before taking the knight first queen on g3 threatening the checkmate uh we have g6 now uh of course you cannot play something like f6 uh, try to defend this way because uh, rook g6 and that would be a disaster so uh, that's not possible this is why we have g6 and only now a takes on b3 uh, and again what to play as black black actually have to be very precise and and this is the only engine line where which you can find to get any counterplay actually uh, bishop on f3 it's almost impossible to find it in the rapid game uh, the idea is uh, if the queen takes uh, on f3 the problem is g takes on f5 winning this uh, material back uh, and now black has one extra pawn of course these pawns are not the best pawns in the world uh, but still these two pawns and also these pawns are also you know very very lonely so black would have very very nice gameplay here uh what else after bishop on f3 maybe g takes on f3 actually is even worse because queen on c1 tactic you see that already after king on g2 let's say queen c2 uh, attacking the the knight so here is the problem uh black would win back the material win the pawn uh, and also the pawn structure is just perfect so uh black would have just definitely the much better game uh, the only problem is if white can find rook on c4 then there is no no queen on c1 uh the queen has to be moved and uh, or or b bishop on c6 this is actually the only move and the game can continue knight d6 and white would have definitely very active uh, and and great game with the uh, ideas like you know uh, queen on f4 queen on f6 uh, the pawn can come you know checkmate on g7 all of this is on the board a very dangerous position for uh, for black uh, however anish giri instantly play rook on d8 and here is the problem this is the losing move so actually feel free to pause the video and find the winning continuation for white but not only winning continuation make it in style okay don't be a butcher uh, be an artist while i enjoy my cup of tea okay you found it are you ready so the most beautiful uh, move here rook on c4 of course is winning uh even you know uh, jumping with the knight on, on d6 all of these are very active and good moves however e6 is just highlighting all the position here it's 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 just winning uh queen cannot take the queen uh because if if the, if that happens then of course we have still uh, back rank issues this is the this is a checkmate because the the knight controls g7 so that's not possible queen on c5 maybe pinning the the rook uh, still doesn't work queen e5 look at this move uh, and now the problem is uh, of course it cannot be taken because of checkmate uh, but g takes on f5 doesn't work as well because queen c5 bishop on c5 winning the rook uh, and now simply e7 bishop on c6 and just you know uh winning the material and with extra rook that's winning so uh in this position anish try something else queen on c1 with check we have king on h2 and now rook on d4 and here comes uh another great move e7 e7 the idea of this move is to bring the queen to b8 of course uh the queen on b8 was also winning here uh, however after e7 this is much stronger so now what to do uh, we have queen on c8 defending and here comes uh, the crushing move queen on e5 threatening the checkmate threatening uh the promoting to the queen and threatening to win the rook so this is just crushing uh, and for example if you take the the knight then then of course this is completely winning uh because this is not the end game 
because queen actually can take the rook back and and this is just just winning okay so uh, completely winning position so it's just hopeless so after queen on e5 anish giri just give one more check uh, and after king on g3 not even taking with the <laughs> with the with the knight but playing king on g3 and in this position anish giri resign what the game really masterpiece and it's all everything happened in the rapid time control so commentators were just you know in shock like something like that can be created definitely that was home preparation of magnus carlsen a uh, very beautiful very active game uh, so Anish Giri had to win in game number two, three or four. And I would like to show you the position from game number two. So uh, this is what happened. Magnus Carlsen play bishop on e6 in this position. What would you play as white as Anish Giri in this position? You can try to find the winning move. And I hope you found it queen on h6 and there is uh, and there is nothing black actually ten, can do uh, knight goes to g5 uh, and checkmate on h7 is coming the only way to defend is queen on f6 and after knight on g5 exchange the queens uh, king on g7 bishop on e6 uh, and this is just you know uh winning for uh, for white two rooks uh, extra pawns the past pawn everything you know is is better for white so that would be crushing so anish giri had his chance is in game number two uh, to actually uh, equalize the score in the second mini match in day number two uh, however he didn't deliver also in the game number three he had a, a slightly better position maybe he had the chances but not as spectacular as in this game and then in game number four, we had this position. And here uh, Anish Giri had three minutes on the clock. Magnus Carlsen also three minutes. Black pieces are completely passive. Anish Giri just, you know, played a very beautiful game. He pushed, he sacrificed, and then he got the piece back. And, and all of this just happened. Beautiful game. And he just relaxed a bit because position of black is just hopeless so what he could play is for example knight on f6 and after let's say queen on b3 rook on d3 queen b1 uh, king g2 uh, and then whatever whatever black play then of course uh, queen goes to f5 win the pawn uh, and the attack can continue and and he can win the, the game however believe me or not but in this position uh, anish giri play queen on f5 and this is move which is not losing, uh, but actually queen e2. And John Bartolomeo just, you know, said lose pieces, lose pieces, rook and the knight. Lose pieces, double attack. Uh, and as you see, this is already, it's not losing. It's not losing uh, because after rook on c1, uh, queen on h5, uh, queen f6. Uh, the rook is under attack, so a rook on d4, uh, and white just delivered the the draw. But draw doesn't matter, as the uh, as of course uh, that means Magnus Carlsen won the second mini match. So what a day! Very very exciting day, and Anish Giri had at least two great chances to win uh, two games uh, so the score could be completely opposite completely different however he couldn't do that and he said in the interview that it's shame that he couldn't deliver in such a good position and uh, and yeah but that chess and it's sometimes it's ruthless uh, and this is what happened however beautiful game uh, by Anish Giri beautiful two games and also a masterpiece created in the game number one by Magnus Carlsen. What a game. And I would like to show you also uh, what just happened. So this is the, the, the full chart. So what just happened in this tournament. As you see at the end, Magnus Carlsen won two mini matches. Uh, and he won all the tournament. Uh, so yeah, that's all for today. If you like this video, press like. If for some reason, but I cannot see any reason, you don't like it, press and like. And if you don't want to miss uh, other relations from the tournament or from the games from the past, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.